guys, I want to show you guys something. Today's video is brought to you by Sutco. Head on over to thesutherland.group slash join our team and uh, check out all the positions available or you could just uh, email our HR directly by going to james.guy at sutherland.group email them directly current positions open are residual divisions in Creston, Kelowna, West Kelowna and Vernon a logging division class 1 driver highway log transfer in Castlegar um, international division class 1 drivers in Kettle Falls, Washington Priest River, Idaho and then got a whole bunch of office positions. Health and safety manager in Salmo or Nelson. Logistics broker in Kelowna. Inside sales representative in Kelowna. Remote transportation broker. Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario, and in Vancouver. New position in Vancouver available. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just kind of watching what the forklift is doing, getting unloaded over here. Is it going backwards? Okay, it's going backwards. So we'll throw this camera up. Just getting unloaded here in Sumner, Washington, and we get to drive through Seattle traffic. I'm not looking forward to it. Not looking forward to it at all. But I guess it's part of trucking, right? Lights on. I already lifted the axle on the trailer, so drop axle is down. Depart on Isaac. Start next load and hammer down. Apparently, we're going to have some issues because. There's a rock slide in Karameas closing Highway 3 and apparently we're on a tight deadline to make this next load. So yeah, unloaded here in Thumbner. We're running empty to Chilliwack and then a high priority load to Belford. Belford? Belford? you know, past Nelson. By the ferry, by the ferry. It's going to a development there, housing development there somewhere. Somebody comes running around the corner, it's like, off the problem. 
Oh, there's, there's a truss going back into the building. That's never good. And where are we gonna, we're gonna thread our way through here. green truck they're unloaded right in front of me but these are got it's got a problem with the paperwork it doesn't match what they delivered that always sucks it doesn't happen very often every now and then it has happened to me I've got two directions going, one on the phone, one on Garmin. I have the route pick that I want to go on, and if either of them say the other route is a lot faster, I'm going to pick the faster route due to all the traffic jams. All right, you know what? I've waited here long enough. I'm going down the center lane. Even though the first section was all turn lane only. If I don't do something sketchy, I'm never gonna move. One of those roads. I watched a couple other people do sketchy stuff first. I'm like, you know what? I think they've got the right idea. That worked out okay for me. didn't. <laughs> Let that car go. Yeah, didn't even hurt me at all. stop here until I know I have enough room on the other side of the railroad. That should do it. I'm not, not taking the chance. Get a honk there, it's pretty darn green. It's literally reaching for the horn when they started moving. Get off your phone. truck sleep over here there are signs all over the place that says no overnight parking anywhere in this city wonder if they hand out tickets for parking there overnight or 
maybe they didn't park there overnight. Maybe they uh, have unloaded and now they're waiting for their next dispatch. Or waiting to load at their next appointment and they can't show up for an hour. Right now my goal is to take 167 here all the way to 405 and then take 405 all the way up to Highway 5 and just head north. Keep it nice and simple. If the traffic's going to allow me to do so. If the left lane all of a sudden clears up, I will shoot into the left lane because it is moving faster. Nice gap right there. Rainy weather seems to slow people down, which I guess is okay, you know. Some people don't have the uh, experience of running on wet roads and knowing when you can drive quicker and when you can't. question is, did I pick the wrong lane? Or is this one overall going to be quicker still? Kind of have to make a judgment call and then just stick with it. Make a bed. Don't be a lane swapper. Swap left and right as one lane goes quicker than the other. Quickly switch back and forth. If you're on a motorcycle, that's fine, but not in a car. That's how you get accidents. So yeah, we'll see once once I'm loaded in Chilliwack, I'll take a look at the 
highway conditions again and see if Karamunas is still open or closed and then have to make a decision which route to take around Karamunas. Or if we are allowed to go through Karamunas. Or if it seems like by the time I get there we are allowed to go through Karamunas. Because the detour around is significant. Northbound, closed, I think overnight. people are going to turn off over here. Of course, then we'll just rush over to the next traffic jam. It's coming up is the intersection of Highway 18? 18? It's a shortcut to avoid Seattle. It's the way I came in. Hey guys, I want to show you guys something. Look in my mirror. There's a car there with only one marker light on in my mirror. But turn your lights on, peoples. I can't see you. Okay, Garmin is saying if I exit over here to the right, the route will be 11 minutes faster. I don't know, 11 minutes? If people all follow those directions, right? And if everybody will now crowd off and follow that road, 11 minutes is not usually accurate enough to say I will save time going that way. If it says it's gonna save an hour and a half, it's worth taking the detour. So, Garmin, Garmin and 
Google Maps both agree I should exit here to save a few minutes. But I also see all the really, really bright red from the accident on the 405 is gone and just yellow now. So it's clearing out. So by the time I get there, the better choice probably will be staying on the 405. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay committed to running the 405. traffic try to match the speed of the people on the on-ramp So yeah, we're not actually going to drive through Seattle at all. We're going to, I think it's Auburn. 405 goes through Auburn. That, that camper van in front of us, that white van is causing this traffic jam here right now. Running slow in the fast lane. Come on. Oh, they're turning over without, oh, they're not the signal lights. You've made the lane change and then you turn the signal lights on. That, that's not how that works. But I do appreciate you moving to the slow lane. US Care. Oh, on their cell phone. Is leaning against the window, talking on a cell phone. Yeah, that explains a few things. over is there anybody on the ramp that wants to merge in this lane as well hey, there's an oversized load here 
comes a red line on the GPS. But, well, the, it was a huge, huge red line on the GPS. Now it's a short red line with lots of yellow. So here comes the traffic jam. Right around the next corner. Three miles from the 405. And the traffic jam goes well on well uh, well on its way on the onto the 405. Because it's the 405 that had the car accident. Hey, still some beautiful fall colors here in the rain. Exiting to take a back road to the 405. Now, I haven't taken this intersection often enough to know which lane I really want to be in. Since I am making a right hand turn, I should probably stay in the right lane. Yep, 405 north to Bellevue. Okay, that's us. Exit only. According to the GPS, we are in the red line now. So that might be good news that we haven't hit the traffic jam yet. It looks like there's brake lights on the head, so speed limit 45. Okay, I expected this to be bumper to bumper according to Google Maps and to Garmin, so hallelujah. Doesn't mean we're not going to hit a traffic jam here. There we go. Because this is always a traffic jam, but hey, much, much better than I was expecting. Whoa, yeah, let's just suicide pass on the shoulder. That seems like a great idea. And these cars are hanging out to the left hand side to allow for suicide passing. Maybe it's etiquette to allow people to suicide pass here. Maybe there's an exit? I'm not sure why. We'll, we'll see up ahead. The 
highway seems to be moving just fine. We're just having to merge onto the highway. Oh, there goes another suicide passing. Shoulder use permitted when metered. Got it. We're supposed to use a shoulder here. Not, uh, not earlier. I understand. the shoulder lane is, it is alternating, exactly alternating, but it doesn't feel like the shoulder lane is faster than the other one, but i got a feeling more than one car goes through a green light. I feel like people are running the green. traffic jam. <sighs> Should have probably stayed in the shoulder lane, huh? Guess it's not too late, it's empty. Like, if we're going to be slow, oh, does it say exit only up ahead? Well, that was a dumb choice. Oh, you 
dumb car too. I made a dumb choice. My bad. Apparently trucks don't stay in this lane. This guy's let me in. Thank you, sir. Give him four-way flashers as a thank you. Because I'm the idiot here. So I happens when you drive a road you don't know, right? section on Garmin. Yeah, I couldn't do this every single day. Trucking in big cities. We're not even going through the city, we're going around the big city. I guess it's all greater Seattle, if you look at it that way, but it's a whole bunch of small, smaller cities all squished against each other. feeling once we cross I-90, the traffic will clear right out. Most of this traffic wants to go onto I-90, I believe. I think I-90 is still six or seven miles away.
So we've got at least six more miles of this. Well, I could be wrong. It might clear right up. But I'm fairly confident after I-90 it'll just be clear sailing. this construction over here is for. See a building beside us on the left hand side. It's got huge, huge murals of jets painted on them. I got a feeling that's a Boeing factory. All right, there's a Boeing logo on the factory building there. Yeah, it must be a Boeing factory. Boeing has factories all over the place. I think they got one by Everett as well. Lots of construction going on right along the shoulder here. Beautiful fall colors. It's gorgeous. Yeah, all our trees are naked already. Down here, they still have gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. Doing a little waka waka there, mini van. behind us, huh? Man, the vibrant yellows from just beautiful. Love it. Four point six miles to I ninety. I believe these big concrete walls are to prevent the sound of the uh, highway. from going into the residential zones. All right, 
this is where Google Maps and uh, Garmin originally showed the accident, so maybe it'll clear up before I-90 here. I don't know if the accident's still here or not. That pink car sure wants to become a bumper decoration. Or maybe it thinks if it ram rams me hard enough, I can be its hood ornament. Got big eyelashes on its headlights as well. Been on the road. <coughs> Excuse me. Lots of construction going on here. Designing this intersection. It's in, putting in some roundabouts. miles to I-90 and according to Garmin around this corner the traffic jam stops. Speed up a bit. this road used to be. Are they adding another lane? I think it was always just two lanes plus HOV each direction. It's been a long time since I've ran the 405. Not 
quite big enough of a gap. This car is awfully slow. Here's I-90. Well, guys, I'm going to keep enjoying this traffic. I'll let you guys go. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See what this uh, high-priority load is. I'm told it is... 53 feet long exactly, and it'll barely fit on my deck. See how that goes. And how that rock slide goes. I'll let you guys know all of that tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am out of here. You guys rock. <laughs>